Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Grace and peace in Jesus' holy name. We come to you again with another uh, Bible program, Word of Truth. And here today, we're going to deal with our subject for the day, which is called, Our Afflictions Today is the Fulfillment of the Scriptures. My name is Brother Albert. I'll be your teacher for the day. And our reader for the day is Brother Darnell. And for the last couple of months, we've seen what has gone on not only around this country, but around the world. Because what has happened to the Negroes, and I say Negroes because for some reason people think when you use that term, it's sort of like degrading. But that's what they call us in the beginning, and that's what they named the land after us over in our country, in Africa. And so what is going on today is that we realize that there is a curse on God's chosen people. And if you watched our show enough, you know that we are God's chosen people, the Hebrew Israelites. And so the people that are his chosen people are under this curse because when we're in our land, we didn't keep the commandments of God. And so we got kicked out of the land. And so I use that word Negro to describe distinctively who we are because there are a lot of different black races in this country. Some are from the Hamites, some are from, you know, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Sudan, uh, uh, Zimbabwe. But the particular ones that are under this curse are the ones who are out of the tribe of Judah, who are part of the nation of Israel. Because when we were in our own land, we were a part of the nation of Israel, 12 tribes. And so what happened when the tribes split in the, ninth, in the ninth century B.C., the 10 tribes remained in the northern kingdom, which was in the land of Shechem in the city of Samaria. And the two tribes migrated down into Jerusalem, our land, which was the tribe of Benjamin and Judah. So what happened in 722, the 10 tribes went in exile by the Assyrians and the two tribes, the one tribe remained in Jerusalem because see our Lord and Savior had to come through here, had to come out of the tribe of Judah. And what happened is so finally in 70 AD, when Rome, Emperor Vespasia and his, and his son Titus went in and destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD, what happened? Those that did escape, as it said in the Obadiah, they migrated down in Western Africa, West Africa, in a land called Negro Land. So when you who like to Google, Google uh, European map of 1736, you'll see that part of Africa called the Negro land. And so the Israelites, which were out of the tribe of Judah, went there where the indigenous people of that land really didn't like us because we kept the laws and the commandments of God and, and everything. And so when they, the time that they came across the Atlantic Ocean and looking for slaves, the indigenous people of that land came over to Negro land and took us in as slaves. And they brought us across the Atlantic Ocean, thus start the uh, African transatlantic slave trade of 1619. So what happened then? One thing we can see, we know that this curse today is on the Negroes. No one else. Just the Negroes. Because they are the real Jews. We are the real Jews. And guess what? Jesus Christ himself came out of the tribe of Judah. So not only was he black, but he was also a Negro. And I know that's a hard pill for some of y'all to swallow, but if you just drink some water, it'll go down real easy. And so we're gonna look at this. We're gonna look at some of these curses that have been put on us or that was on us from the very beginning. And we're gonna work this way down and find out that all these afflictions that we're going through is by design. It's a fulfillment of the scriptures because when we were in our own land, we didn't keep the commandments and laws of God. And we're gonna start this off first by saying and showing who the Negroes are, what lineage did they come through? Because Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We know that all the Europeans came out of the lineage of Japheth. And we want to find out right now who came out of the lineage of Ham, because though out of those three sons, they populated the whole earth. And what we're going to do right now, we're going to go to the Zonda Vance Pictoria Bible Dictionary and look up the word Ham. When you get it, brother, read. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, mm -hmm. and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Not the who? Not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. So he's progenitor means that all the dark races came out of him except the Negroes. Negroes. Keep going. But the Egyptians... 
the Ethiopians, the Libyans, and the Canaanites. Genesis chapter 10, verses 6 through 20. His indecency when his father lay drunk brought a curse upon Canaan. Genesis chapter 9, verses 20 through 27. Now we see right here. So we see that the Israelites, the tribe of Judah, or we did not come out of Japheth, which were the Gentiles. We didn't come out of Ham. Then where did the Negroes come out of? They came out of Shem, the Semitics, from the seed of Abraham. So we see right here that the Negroes didn't come out of Ham, so they came out of Shem. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to establish that fact to see that when we say Negroes, that is not a derogatory word. Because like I said, they named land after us in, in, off the nation of, uh, uh, after the continent of, of Africa. Now let's look at this. Let's look at some of these curses that were on us to describe who this curse is on today. We're going to go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 45. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 45. And when you get it, brother, read. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, mm -hmm. and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. Now, you see right here that he said all these curses are going to come on us. And they did come on us because what we didn't do. We didn't keep the you commandments of God. So you mean to tell me a preacher going to get up on Sunday morning and tell you you don't have to keep the laws and the commandments of God? Well, guess what? The very thing that we didn't do that got us kicked out of the land is the very thing we got to do in order to get back into the land. Mm -hmm. So what sense does that make? When they tell you you don't have to keep the law, well, then how are you going to get back into the land then? Keep going. 46. Mm -hmm. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. They're going to be upon us for a sign. You want to know who the real Israelites are? You look and see who has this curse upon them. Now you got the real Israelites. Now you got the real Jews. I don't care what color your skin is. If you're not under this curse, then guess what? You're not a real Israelite. Because those that are real Israelite, we see it every day. We feel it every day. We walk in a store, eyes on us. We get pulled over by the police. We just hope we just get away with a ticket. We just want to make it home. No other group have to go through that. Not even a guy from Kenya or Zimbabwe or Ghana who lives in this country. They never, they never experienced that, and some of them are just as dark as I am. Why is that? Because the curse isn't on them. It isn't on them. Keep going. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness mm -hmm. and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And said, so we're going to serve our enemies, whom the Lord is going to send against us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be in want, not of some things, but all things. We're going to always be wanting this, and wanting that, and needing this, and needing that. In all things, keep going. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now, if this don't convince you who the real is, right? Nothing will. Since you like to Google, like I say, Google yokes of iron and go to image. And you will see, not an African, but you will see a Negro with yokes of iron on their <coughs> necks. They didn't just put this in this Bible. This is describing who the real Israelite is. This is describing and letting you know why we're going through what we're going through. It said, it said that it put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until they have destroyed thee. Now let's look at this. Let's go to Jeremiah 30th chapter. You want to finish 68? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go to 68. Thank you. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships mm -hmm. by the way whereof I spake unto thee. He said, Lord, going to bring us into Egypt again by ship because the first time we went into Egypt, we went down into the land. We walked down there. This time, they're talking about bringing us into Egypt. Now, they're not talking about that Egypt on the continent of Africa. They're talking about this land, this country. This is Egypt. 
Egypt here means bondage. Keep going. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. You're going to be sold for bondmen and bondwomen, meaning that there was a price on your head. When they put you on that auction block, they started out with a certain price, and if you were the big buck, what did they do? The price kept going, going up out. because they wanted the good slave. And it said, and no one shall buy you, meaning that no one's going to buy you and set you free. Because when the master back then bought you, the first thing they did was put a yoke of iron around your neck, and they led you away into captivity, into slavery, into servitude. Keep going. Oh, and that's it. Okay, now let's go to Jeremiah the 30th chapter. <laughs> let's go to Jeremiah 30th. And we're going to start reading at verse 10. Jeremiah 30 and verse 10. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Now he said he's gonna serve us from he's gonna save us from afar, from the land of captivity. All through the Bible, it talks about us coming out of captivity. And that means that if we're, as he's talking about bringing us out of captivity, that means that to this very day, we're still in captivity. Because although they say they freed us back in 1865, guess what? If they freed us, then why are we still here? That's just like if you went to jail, mm -hmm. and like I said earlier, and you got 10 years, and then they decide to let you out because you served your 10 years, but you can't leave the cell, are you free? Hmm. You're still in captivity. So right here they're saying that, that, that he's going to save us from afar, from the land of their captivity, which means we're still in captivity to this very day. Keep going. And Jacob shall return mm -hmm. and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. So Jacob's going to return and going to be in rest. And how long is that rest? That's a thousand year rest. That's when Satan's going to be locked away. Jesus is going to set up his kingdom, and we're going to be in rest back in our land for a thousand years. Keep going. 11. Mm -hmm. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, mm -hmm. to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, will I have scattered thee? Yet will I not make a full end of thee. Now, he's not going to make a full end of us, because what he's going to do, he's going to bring us back to our mm -hmm. land. Keep going. But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Now, what are we going through today? Punished. What you see us going through today, God is correcting us in measure. He has a certain amount of punishment. He going to deal on us, and that's exactly what's happening. Whether you like it or not, whether you accept it or not, there's nothing anybody can do about it. If your mother whoop you and say she's going to give you 20 licks, and she's counting, she's not going to stop at 15. She's not going to stop at 16. She's not going to stop at 18. She's going to stop until she finished. Same thing with God. He ain't going to stop until he had dealt it out, and you ain't going to go, we ain't going to go unpunished. Why? Because when he called us and made us his people, his chosen people, he told us to keep these laws and commandments of him and go teach the world. And what happened? When we dropped the ball and didn't do that? Mm -hmm. Because the only people who can teach the world are Israelites. Because he said, of all families of the earth, Israel, you only have I known. Mm -hmm. So when Israelite dropped the ball and didn't keep these laws and the commandments, now the whole world sits in darkness waiting for us to get it together. Keep going. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. But thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. This bruise is incurable. It hurts. This what we're taking right now, it hurts. It's incurable. It's grievous. Which means it's hard. It hurts, man. Your mom whooped you and I, or your daddy whoop you after you get through whooping, after you get through getting that whooping, what happens? You start licking them wounds, man. You just got to wait until they heal. Keep going. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. There has no healing medicine. Israel, we have no healing medicine. A man gets sick. And he goes to the hospital, goes to the doctor. And doctor looked at his symptoms. And the doctor just gave him something to treat the symptoms. 
And the man sick for years, and all the doctors ever done was give him something to treat the symptoms. He never give him anything to deal with the disease itself. All he's ever done was deal with the symptoms. You go to your doctor and say, I got a runny nose, I cough and I sneeze and got stuffed up head. He's like, oh, you got a cold. Well, he's going to deal with the symptoms. Oh, that cold. So this man, after the doctor just gave him medicine to deal with his symptoms all these years, what happened to the man? He eventually died. Israel, what is wrong with us today? We dealing with bigotry, racism, murder, poverty, uh, 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 troubles, list. and all this stuff that's going on with us right now. And all we've ever done was dealt with the symptoms. These are the symptoms that is wrong with Israel today. So they march. They won't help with the symptoms. What is the sickness that is causing these symptoms? The sickness is this. Our disobedience to the commandments that God has given us. You want to cure the symptoms? Deal with the disease, the sickness. And guess what? The symptoms will go. Because all we have right now are just the symptoms which are caused by the sickness. And that's disobedient and not keeping his laws, his statutes, and his commandments. Keep going. 14. Mm -hmm. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. Mm -hmm. They seek thee not. Mm -hmm. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. He said, I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy. The enemy is our wound. That's what caused our pain. The enemy, keep going. With the chastisement of a cruel one mm -hmm. for the multitude of thy iniquities because thy sins were increased. Mm -hmm. Why criest thou for thy affliction? Mm -hmm. Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity. He said, why cry? Because of this affliction that's on us. He said, this wound is incurable. The course we got, the worst of whooping got. Keep going. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. In other words, the worst he got, the worst of whooping he got, the worst the affliction came upon us. Now let's look at this again. Let's go over here to Jeremiah 15. I'm sorry, let's go to Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26 chapter. And we're going to start reading that verse 14. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all the things, all these commandments, mm -hmm. and if you shall despise my statutes, or if you if or if your soul abhor my judgment, so that you may so that you will not do all my commandments, mm -hmm. but that you break my covenant, I will I, I will excuse me. I will I also will do this unto you. Mm -hmm. I will even appoint over you terror. God said he's going to appoint over us terror. That means that everything that's happened to us, he appointed it over us. Mm. So you want to blame somebody. Well, I wouldn't blame the most high. But if you want to know what's causing all, don't blame him now. But if you want to know what's causing all this, God is causing it. Because he said, I would appoint over you terror. Terror. Because why? The subject says our affliction today is the fulfillment of the scriptures. He said it and he did it. Keep going. I will even appoint over you terror, mm -hmm. consumption, and a burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. Mm -hmm. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. In other words, no matter what we do, and I got a book at home about that thick of all the inventions that the black Negroes have ever had and ever made. Oh, yeah, they put our names in a history book, but who benefited from it? The enemies. Mm -hmm. They benefited from it. So he said right here, we're going to sow our seed in vain, but who's going to eat it? The enemy. The enemy. God is the God of his word because no matter what we do, they benefit from it. Let's see, where are we? Keep going. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when none pursueth you. Now, it's one thing for a person to reign over you, but it's another thing for a person who reign over you hate you. Mm. 
when they hate you and they rain over you, see if somebody rain over you and they kind of like you a little bit, they kind of take it easy on you every once in a while. Mm. But if they hate you, they ain't cutting you no slack. slack. No slack at all. So when we tell people about what we're going through, or we talk, or sometimes the, the enemy, I would say that when white people talk to us, we talk to them about, you know, slavery. They hate that because it's sort of like uncomfortable to them. Because no more, they feel guilty about it. And it's a subject they really don't want to talk about. So a lot of times when you get into a conversation, sometimes it can get a little heated. And the first thing they'll say is, well, we're not guilty. We didn't, we didn't enslave you back then. Our forefathers did that. So we, we didn't do that. Yeah, but guess what? You're benefiting from what your forefathers did. Yes, they're guilty for enslaving us, but guess what? You're responsible. And why do I say that? You remember a guy named O.J. Simpson? Mm-hmm. In the murder okay. trial of the century, in a court of law, he was found not guilty for murder, but then they took him to civil court and he was found, and they said he was responsible. So how can you be not guilty for murder, but they say you're responsible? It's the same thing with us. When we say that we're Israelite, we're Hebrew Israelite, and the reason why we're in bondage is today is because our forefathers didn't keep the laws and the commandments of God, and then the brothers would say, yeah, but they broke the law. They're guilty for breaking the law back then. We didn't break the law, so why should we have to suffer? Well, the reason why is because we are of our forefathers, and we are still God's chosen people. So no, we're not guilty for the sins that they committed back then, but guess what? <laughs> we're responsible. Because just like we're under curse that was put on them back then, guess what? When we go back to the land, we're going to enjoy the lands flowing with milk and honey, just like they will. So no, we didn't, we didn't break the laws back then, but we're breaking them now, so that means that we are responsible. Now let's look at this again. Let's go to... Uh, Amos, let's go to uh, Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15. Go to Jeremiah 15, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Jeremiah 15, verse 1. And when you get it, brother, read. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be towards this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. He said, though Moses had once stood in the gap for these people, though Samuel had once stood in the gap for these people, God had had enough of Israel. He said, get them out of my sight. Why? Because we kept messing up over and over again. When we were in our own land, even when we were in the wilderness, we kept messing up. And God said, I've had enough of these people. He said, get them out of my sight. I don't care if Moses did stand in the gap for them at one time. He said, I've had enough of these people. And then that's when he made a decree of this punishment that was going to come on Israel. Keep going. Excuse me, too. And it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, where shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, thus saith the Lord, such as, such as are for death to death. He said, some of y'all are going to die. You're going to die. Keep going. And such as are for the sword to the sword. Some of you are going to be destroyed by the sword. Keep going. And such are for the famine to the famine. Mm -hmm. And such are for the captivity to the captivity. And such are for the captivity to the captivity. So guess which one we fell upon? Captivity. Captivity. So what does it mean by such are for the sword to the sword? Now, that's such a for the sword to the sword is not just a sword, but a pronouncement that is made on Israel. Let's look at this sword. Let's go to Amos, the ninth chapter. And we're going to read one verse, verse 4, and find out what he mean by this sword. And when you get it, brother, read. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, mm -hmm. this will I command the sword, and it shall slay them. And I will set my eyes upon them for evil and not for good. He said this. We go into captivity. Mm -hmm. He's going to command the sword, and it's going to slay them. And that sword is his word. And whatever his word speaks, whether it's good or evil, it's going to take place. 
Let's look at this. Now, who is directly the sword? Let's go to Psalm 17 chapter. We're going to read one verse. Verse 13. Psalm 17 and verse 13 and see who this sword is that he uses to slay us. And when you get it, brother, read. Arise, O Lord. Mm -hmm. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. The wicked is his sword. That's the sword that the Lord uses to, to, to uh, whoop us or chastise us. He used the wicked because what he does, he commands them to do that. He tells them to do that. He either uses his word as a sword to tell us to do good, or he uses his word as a sword to slay us or to do evil. God commands it. So what's on us, Israel, my brothers and my sister, is a fulfillment of the scriptures. Yes, we hate to see the injustice happen to us. Yes, we hate to see our brothers and sisters get shot down in the street. Yes, but guess what? When you turn to God and start keeping his laws and his statutes and his commandments, he even said in Ezekiel, he said, if you turn to me, he said, even in the land of your captivity, I will be a sanctuary for you. Just turn to him. All right, let's go over to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 14. And let's see what this sword is and see what this sword is and what it represents. And when you get it, brother, read. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, mm -hmm. and having on the, the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked, mm -hmm. and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. It's saying the sword of the Spirit, which is what? Which, which is, is the, the word, word of God. God. That's the sword that God uses, and he uses it, like I said, to do good or to do evil. It's a sword, it's his word. And when he sends his word out, guess what? And it's going to accomplish that which he pleased. Let's go here to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. And we're going to start reading at verse 8. And see how powerful the word of God is. Isaiah 55 and verse 8. And when you get it, brother... Read. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, mm -hmm. neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. He said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. For as high as the heaven is above, there so is my thoughts higher than yours. Now, how can you compare your thoughts with God's thoughts? He can't. He can't. Can't do it. How can you second guess him? Can't do it. How can you question him when the things that are happening to us, you can't do it. Just read the scriptures or come here to the house of Jacob and we'll explain it to you. Or just keep tuning in and you'll learn. Keep going. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now it says right here, just like the rain come down, it's coming down for a reason. And it will come down and go, just go right back up. Just like the word of God. When God sends his word out, it will come right back to him until it does what he's sending out there to do. So what is happening to us, it had to happen. It's a fulfillment of the scripture. It has to happen. Keep going. So shall my word be that so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. It shall not return unto me void, mm -hmm. but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. Now it's gonna prosper. It's gonna prosper in the thing whereto I sent it, meaning it's gonna come true. Because even though this happened, he prophesied this way back then. Guess what? When God spoke his word, it went forward. And the word was just hanging out there, just waiting, just waiting, just waiting. And soon as it was time, soon as Israel dropped the ball and stopped keeping the laws and the commandments of God, it went into effect. He didn't speak it right after it happened. He spoke it in advance. So what has happened to us is the fulfillment of the scriptures. Things that we did and things we didn't do. Let's go here to Deuteronomy 32 and look at another description of this curse that is on us. Deuteronomy 32, and we're going to read one verse. 
Verse number 26. I yeah. said, mm-hmm. go ahead. Mm-hmm. I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. He said, I will scatter them into corners. Israel was, squ- was scattered into corners. He said, I will make the memories of them to cease from among men and from among us. Because to this very day, Israel don't know who they are. They have always, every few, few years, changed our name. And right now, they're walking with pride and dignity. And they're saying, I'm African American. I'm with the people of color. African American. You can't be from two continents, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, you're, 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 you are an American, but you are an American citizen. You're here registered as an American citizen. So that doesn't mean that that's telling you what your nationality is. We have all different kinds of nationality or Americans, but that's their citizenship. Well, who are you? What is your nationality? And then we few brother have the audacity to come and tell you, hey, brother or sister, we're God's chosen people. We are the, tree, we are the, we are the Hebrew Israelite. The children of God, God's chosen people, the real Jews. And they look at you like you crazy. <laughs> but the enemy will give you a name and call you that, and you will sign, seal, and deliver for it. How can you stand strong on a name that was given to you by the very same people who enslaved you? And then somebody comes along reading from the scriptures, tell you who you are, and then you doubt that. But you'll believe, the, you'll believe the master. You'll believe the slave owners. Because we were one time called Ezekiel, uh, Hezekiah, all these names. But when we got over here, they started calling you Johnny, Leroy, Roy Lee. And you accepted those names, but a brother now going to call himself Daniel, going to call himself uh, uh, Naphtali. Oh, he tripping, man. Because now when you're coming into the knowledge of the truth, you know who you are. Because when you say that you are Hebrew Israelite, what does that do? That connects you to a land. You are not connected to a land if you say that you're black. You're not connected to a land if you say that you're colored. You're not connected to a land if you say you're African American because you can't be in two places at one time. So we care you who you are. Let's look at this. Let's, uh, let's go over here to Matthew 24 because he said, right here he said, he said, I will scatter you into corners. Why did God say he will scatter us into corners? Why is that? Because this scripture that I'm about to read had to be fulfilled also from our captivity. Let's go to Matthew 24 and read one verse, 14. He said, I will scatter you into corners. And what does that 24, what does that 14 verse say? Read it. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, how would this gospel go through the four corners? How do we get there? Because we were scattered into slavery. And so what God is saying that even though you were enslaved there in the four corners, Wherever you find yourself, whenever you come into the knowledge of the truth, you're supposed to preach the gospel. You're supposed to minister this word. That's why he said, I will scatter you into four corners. He could have just put us in one little spot somewhere. But he scattered us so that when we came into the knowledge of the truth, his word would be preached there. Let's look at this. Let's go over here to uh, Lamentation 3. Lamentation 3. And we're going to start reading at verse 42. Lamentation 3, verse 42. And when you get it, brother, read. We have transgressed and have rebelled. Mm -hmm. Thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered with thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Mm -hmm. Thou hast slain. Thou hast not pity. God hadn't had pity on us. As much as he loves us, he has not had pity on us because why? Because he's going to punish us in measure. He can't lighten up, not on Israel, 
Can't lighten up on us. Keep going. Thou has covered thyself with a cloud mm -hmm. that our prayers should not pass through. He said he covered with a cloud, so no matter how you pray, no matter how you cry crocodile tears, he ain't hearing you. Why? Because we have not turned back to him. Oh, we prayed to him, but they have not turned to him. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Thou has made us as the offscourging and refuse in the midst of the people. He said, Thou has made us an offscouring and a refuse in the midst of the people. What does that word offscouring mean? Offscouring means rejected by society. We have been rejected by society. What group of people have been rejected by society? More than us. Everybody else could come here. And we've been here for over 400 years. And the Bible describes us to the T. Nobody else rejected by society. But we are rejected by society. And who are they talking about here, Israel? My people. They're talking about us. He said you will be an offscoring and a refuse. What a refuse mean? Refuse Gosh. means trash. And that's how they look at you. You, I mean too. That's how they look at us. Offscoring, rejected by society. So we see what's happening. People not only in this country are marching, people around the world are marching. Not for equality, because Israel has never been treated equal. They how they marching. They're not marching because we're being treated unequally. We over 400 years, we've always been treated unequally. They're marching because they're tired of us or they upset how badly we are being treated. We've always been treated like that now with the internet. You can see it all happen before you. Things that have happened to us have always happened. But the thing is that now they see it. They used to hear about it, but now they see it. So the idea that we're marching for equality would never happen. We would never be equal with anybody because God had not called us to be equal. He said, I have placed you above all the families of the earth, Israel. So no matter how, even if they start treating us equally, guess what? We still come short of the mark because we're either above or beneath. We're either the head or the tail. There are no in-betweens with God. So God called us and he said, I have placed you above all the families of the earth. So they're not marching just for us to be treated equal. They're marching because how badly we're being treated. Let's look at this. Let's go to Jeremiah 8 chapter. Did you finish that? No, sir. Finish that. 46. 46. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. All our enemies. Everybody have opened their mouths against us. It ain't but one person this is talking about right here, and that's us. That's why we have to lean on each other. That's how we have to love one another to gain strength and power by staying together. Let's look at this. Let's go over here to Jeremiah the 8th chapter. Jeremiah the 8th chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 3. Jeremiah 8 chapter and verse 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life. It said, and death shall be chosen. Why would they say that? And death shall be chosen rather than life. Well, because in Deuteronomy 30 and 19, he said, I call on heaven and earth to record against you this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that Amen. both thou and thy seed may live. Why is it choose life? Well, because we're already in darkness. It's talking about death right here, to my spiritual death. Now, the reason why I said choose death, choose life, because if you refuse to choose life, which is in the word of God, guess what? You automatically chose death. Because what did David say? He said, behold, I was shaping in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. So we were born into sin. We were born into darkness. We were spiritually dead. That's why God said right here, choose, choose life. That both thy and thy seed may live. But he said right here, we can show you this word. We can teach you who you are, Israel. And show you that you have to keep the commandments of God. Guess what? Someone will still choose death rather than life. Keep going. And death shall be chosen rather than life mm -hmm. by all the residue of them that remain of this evil 
evil family, mm -hmm. which remain in all the places whether I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? So is Israel going to ever get up on their feet again? They fallen and they can't get up? Are they going to ever return? Keep going. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back mm -hmm. by perpetual backsliding? Mm -hmm. They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Israel refused to return. You know why? Because of all the freedom fighters, the freedom leaders, the black leaders, even in this time that we're in right now, they all have these beautiful little speeches that they make. They all got clever. All, all saying, holding hands, we shall overcome, you know, and, 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 and all that. In all their speeches, not a one has ever said, we need to turn back to God. Not Martin himself. Not Megan Evers, not Mar Marcus Garvey, not Frederick Douglass, not W.E. DeBold, not Booker T. Washington, Nat Turner, Malcolm X. None of them have ever said, we need to turn back to God. Not a one. Keep going. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. God said, I hear you cry, Israel. I hear you moaning, but you're not telling me what I want to hear. Keep going. No man repenteth him of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? No man repented and said, what have we done? Israel see this affliction that's on us today out there in the streets. They want to blame everybody and no one said, what have we done? Who used to whoop you, Darnell, when you was coming up? My mama. Okay, if your mama came in your room and started wailing away, whooping on you, you're not going to ask her, well, what did Bubba do? No, the first thing you're going to say was, what did I do? I know what I did. I mean, she just caught up with it. <laughs> it just caught up with you. But the first thing you're going to say, and you all the same too, when they come to your dad or your mom coming and start whooping on you, the question, what did I do? Right. And you just keep whooping and keep whooping and keep whooping. Don't ever tell you. You going to be a man, he just messing with me. But if he just said, Chuck, you didn't take that garbage off like I told you. Then you go, oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, all right. I see. I got this one coming. Yeah. What is wrong with Israel today? They see this affliction that's on us. They get whooped and whooped and beaten. And not one time as Israel said, well, what did we do? What have we done? Read the Bible. Find out who you are. And once you find out who you are, then you will say, oh, well, we got this whooping coming. It hurts. We don't like it, but we got it coming. They have not because what they want to do is blame everybody for the affliction that we're getting. A couple of years ago, Kanye West says uh, slavery was a choice. And they came down on the brother pretty hard. Only thing is, he didn't have scripture to bag it up. But slavery was a choice because when we were in our own land, God told us, Jeez. you don't keep these laws, these commandments, you're going to be sold into slavery. Right. So they had a choice. They decided not to. And God is not a one that he should lie. Okay, so that's what happened. So Israel has not said, well, what have we done? Keep going. Everyone turned to his course mm -hmm. as a horse rusheth into the battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the stork and the heavens know of her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. Mm -hmm. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. Now Israel don't know that this judgment on us is of the Lord. What's on us now? This is the judgment of the, the Lord. Lord. And they don't even know it. They want to blame everybody. Look what they're doing to us. Look what they're doing to us. Look what they did to us. And they don't want to say, what have we done? They don't want to ask the question, what have we done? They don't want to say that. But they're fighting for equality. Let me tell you something, Israel. Let me tell you something right now. We will never sit at the table of justice and equality. It would never happen. Because God had not chosen us to be equal with nobody. God said, if you can't be up here, you're going to be on the bottom. If you can't be the head, then you're going to be the tail. And God ain't compromising with nobody. So this whooping, this affliction is on us. Now let's look at this. Let's look at these afflictions that David talked about. Let's go to Psalms 119. Psalms 119. We're going to start reading at verse 
six to five. He gonna talk about these afflictions. When you get it, brother, read. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, mm -hmm. according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have for I have believed thy commandments. Mm -hmm. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. He said, before we were afflicted, before we came into slavery, before we came into this bondage, we went astray. He didn't afflict us and then we went astray. No, we went astray. That's why we've been afflicted now. So he said, before I went astray, before I was afflicted, I went That's astray. True. But now have I kept thy word. Skip down to verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. He said, it is good that I'm being afflicted, that I'm taking this whooping and this beat down. So if it's going to teach me something, because it's so important right now that we get into the kingdom. It's so important right now that you come up in the first resurrection. It's so important right now that when Jesus returns, that you're going to meet him in the air. And he's going to take you back to your land. So if it means you get whooped to whoop you in line, then so be it. But he said right here, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. So keep going. 75. Skip down. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right. And that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. And in faithfulness, God has afflicted us because he said he would. He said he would. And that's exactly what he's doing. And we know that God ain't going to put no more on us than we can bear. So he said, I know that in faithfulness thou hast afflicted me. Let's skip down to verse 92. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should then have perished in my affliction. He said, unless I my law has been a delight. In other words, when we came into the knowledge that we had to keep these laws and these commandments, guess what? And we knew that it would get us in the kingdom of God. Guess what? We got happy. Mm -hmm. We were glad to start keeping these laws and these commandments then. We got happy because we know that, oh, now I know. Now I know what I need to do to ease this burden on me. Now I know what I need to do in order to get back into the kingdom, to get into the kingdom of God. Now, because these afflictions, because this was a delight, these laws are a delight for us to do. Well, I'm glad I got whooped then to whoop me back in shape, to get me back on the right track. Keep going. I will never forget thy precepts for what them Thou hast quickened me. He said, with thy precept, they ha thou hast quickened me. What does quicken mean? To me make alive. alive. That means you are spiritually alive now. Now let's look at this. Let's go over here to Lamentations 5. Let's go to Lamentations again. Did we finish that? Yeah. Let's go to Lamentations 5. And we're going to start reading at verse 19. Thou, O Lord, remainest forever. Thy throne from generation to generation. He said, Lord, you're going to be here forever. And your throne is from generation to generation. Keep going. Wherefore doest thou forsake us forever? He said, are you going to forsake us forever because you're going to be here forever? Keep going. And forsook us so long a time. Mm -hmm. Turn thou, turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew, renew our days as of old. He said, turn us, O Lord, and we shall be returned. He said, renew our days of old. In other words, during the days of old, God used to dwell among Israel. He used to walk through the camp. He used to come down and talk to them face to face. Talking about Jesus when he was God. He, they want, that's what Israel wants now. They want that relationship back with God again. And they know that they have to turn to him. That's why he said, turn us unto thee, O God, and we shall be turned. Give us back the days, that relationship we used to have with you that was so lovely, so nice. And that's what Israel wants right now because for a long time, Israel has been without a king. And they don't have a king now except Jesus Christ. He is the king of Israel. Let's look at this again. Let's go over here to see what it takes to turn back to God. Let's go to Zechariah 1. So it says, turn back to God, which none of the leaders have ever said for us to do. Turn back to God. So what does it take to turn back to God to ease this whooping off of us? Let's go to Zechariah 1, and we're going to read verses 2 and 3. 
And when you get it, brother, read. The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Mm -hmm. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. It said the Lord was displeased with our forefathers. Very displeased. And so guess what happened? We got put into captivity because we turned away from God. He said, but turn to me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you. What? Saith the, the Lord, Lord of hosts. hosts. Now let's look at it. What does it mean when it says turn back to the Lord of hosts? Let's go over here to uh, uh, Nehemiah and get the meaning of what it means when God tells us to turn back to him. Go to Nehemiah 1 and we're going to start reading read verse 8 and 9. What does it mean to turn back to God? Because when we say turn back to God to ease of this affliction, it just doesn't mean just, you know, come and join church. <laughs> doesn't mean just that. So there is something that we have to do when we turn to God to ease up these afflictions on us. When you get it, brother, read. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if you transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Now, what happened here? <laughs> That's what happened. Who transgressed against God? We did. Israel transgressed against God. And what did he do? He scattered us where? Among the nations. That has not happened to anybody on the face of the earth. It's a funny thing that every year in February we have what is called Black History Month. But I often tell people that every time we read in our Bible, we are reading about black history. And sometimes people say, oh, you guys sound so militant. No, because for so long, for so long, they have fooled us and confused us by showing us pictures that wasn't even and remotely the true Israelites, the color of the true Israelites. Because what we have to do now, we have to let our people know who we are. So when we read scripture that talks about us going into bondage, going into slavery, this isn't something that we're making up. So he said right here, if you transgress against me, I will scatter you into all kingdom. Uh, uh, I will um, scatter you among the nations. Keep going. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. But if you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them. But if you turn to me, that's what it means to mm -hmm. turn back to God. It doesn't mean you turn to him and uh, turn to the east and pray and that's right. it. He said, if you turn to me and keep my commandments, not just keep them, but do what else? Do them. Do them. Do them. Proverbs said, commit thy works unto the Lord and what will be established? Your thoughts. Your thoughts will be established. People want to read the scriptures and read the scriptures and read the scriptures, but that's good. But you also got to do the works. So he said right here, but if you turn to me and keep my commandments and do them, keep going. Though there were of you cast out into the uttermost parts of the heaven, mm -hmm. yet will I gather them from this and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now, and I will take you back, basically take us back to our land Amen. where he set his Amen. name there. And see, and that's what we're looking for. All the confusion, all the madness that's going on over the world today. We're not even worried about it because the scripture says, don't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. That he may choose, that we may please him who had chosen us to be his soldiers. Let's look at this. Let's go over here to Ezekiel 11 chapter. Ezekiel 11 chapter. And so, with all the affliction, with everything that's going on right now, when we turn to God, this is what he has in store for us. Let's go to Ezekiel 11 chapter and start reading at verse 16. And when you get it, brother, read. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathens, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Oh, though he scattered us mm -hmm. among the heathens. Yeah. And then Hosea said, we have been scattered among the heathens. He said, though I scattered you among the heathens and I scattered you among the countries, he said, yet will I be to you a sanctuary, a place of safety. If you turn to me and I turn back to you, he'll be that sanctuary. Keep going. Therefore I say, 
Thus saith the Lord God, I will even I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, mm -hmm. and I will give you the land of Israel. And I'm gonna give you back your land of Israel because God said right now that, that land is desolate. But you said, but there are people over there. No, if God's people not over there, in His eyes, that land is desolate. Because he said, I've not, I've not, he said, I don't know any other families of the earth but you, Israel. That's for I'm going to punish you for your iniquities. Keep going. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things mm -hmm. thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, mm -hmm. and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the st stony heart out of their flesh mm -hmm. and will give them a heart of flesh mm -hmm. that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinance and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. He said, they shall be my people and I will be their God. And let's look at one more right here. Let's go to Second Timothy 2. And what I was saying earlier, not becoming consumed with the affairs of this life. Because we have a greater calling in our life now. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2. We're going to start reading at verse 1. And when you get it, brother, read. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now, and what you have learned of me that I give to you in knowledge, he said, you take that. And you give that to other faithful men. In other words, teach other brothers what I have taught you and what you're learning. You pass it on. Keep going. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He said endure hardness as a good soldier, because that's what we yeah. are. We are yeah, soldiers, soldiers right here in the, in the army of the Lord. He said endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And what is our goal? Keep going. No man that wharf entangle himself with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. He said no man that's in a war right now in this life, he said you don't become entangled with the affairs of this life. Who's going to be president? Who's going to be mayor? What about this and what about that? He said, no, our job is to do what? To please him who has chosen us to be a soldier. To please him who has chosen us to be a soldier. So I thank you and I pray and I hope that you have gotten something out of this lesson today. Our affliction today is the fulfillment of the scriptures.